Hey, what's up, everybody? Killerian and Flo here, bringing you the 12 Everything Terra podcast. Uh, this week, what we're going to be talking about is the basics of how to improve yourself in PvP, and also the overall preparation of getting into Battlegrounds, getting into 3v3, getting into all of that, as well as the basic etiquette and the mechanics that you're going to be finding in the in 3v3s or PvP in general. Uh, for those of you who don't, who don't know who I am, my name is Killian. I make um, a lot of terror related content on YouTube, though that being money-making guides, being PvE guides, PvP stuff, miscellaneous videos and all that. I also am the Terra Today creator of the Berserker PvP guide over there, and Terra Today is our wonderful sponsor uh, for the weekly giveaway, which I'm also going to be talking about later. And, yeah. And uh, my name is Flo, and I'm active. Uh, I'm an active MMO streamer. I do a lot of uh, content on Terra as well, along with uh, my own Slayer-specific guide I've written on the Terra Today website. If you want any know any knowledge about um, Terra in terms of PvP, especially since I'm a competitive PvPer, feel free to check me out. I'll, I do mostly a lot of my work on stream, uh, rather than Mr. YouTube Extraordinaire Curian here. So. YouTube stop. <laughs> <laughs> But I would just like to give a shout out to my personal uh, winner from the Everything Terra giveaway uh, last week. Right here on screen, Aries God for an awesome comment just talking about what BAMs he hated and whatnot. So if you want to have a chance to win this week, um, once again you'll have to like and comment later. But we'll go over that uh, at the end of the podcast. Alright, and once again, Terra Today is our sponsor. They're the guys who are able to give us the MP to actually go about giving y'all stuff. So make sure to check them out. Uh, easily your best source of guides, K-Terra content, uh, updates, and everything along those lines. But yeah, just the whole deal. So let's jump right in. Alright, so the basics of how to improve yourself in PvP. This, once again, this is for the basics. If, you are, if you're kind of hesitant to get into PvP, you're kind of hesitant just with the whole deal, um, that's what we're here for. So, what what PvP is available in the exiled realm of Arborea? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's like um, from what we know, there's a there's a couple battlegrounds available. There's Corsair Stronghold, Champion Skyring, Freywind Canyon, and there's also open world PvP, of course, along with uh, Alliance Conflict and uh, just a general one v one as well. Um, most of, most of the action. Of end game PvP revolves around um, Champion Skyring, the Alliance Conflict, and uh, Freywind Canyon when events usually happen on Terra. Mm-hmm. Definitely, like there's a there's a very large variety of the overall PvP content that is available, and in my opinion, in the end end game of Terra, PvP is what the game is. That's what that's what I think that they came in and developed the game for was that core PvP. Um, so for everybody who is looking to start getting a little bit better at PvP, there are many, many ways that you can go about understanding the basics, whether it be this podcast, talking with us, or other streamers on Twitch.tv, because you see literally some of the best PvP Terra has to offer uh, through streams, as well as guides. Uh, like I said earlier, I have a Berserker PvP guide on Terra today. Flo has a Slayer PvP guide on Terra today, and there are several other guides available. So you really have to, um, before you fully jump in, or even start thinking about doing PvP, you need to go check out guides, watch streams, things like that, just to make sure that you are prepared and ready for it. Alright, what what would you say next up, or even higher above reading guides and understanding things? What do you think is the most important? Practice. Practice, 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 practice. For those that have like ri- like uh, checked out my guide, my entire guide is literally talking about practicing and being better and just l- understanding your mechanics, your skills, what they do, what your skill ki- icons are, and just kind of just going about it, just uh, like being a part of the PvP experience and just involving yourself in it. Will just you'll just learn over time and just. Nothing is, like, practice makes perfect. Like, you just have to just get your head in there and just do as much PvP as possible. That's, like, the, my best advice, regardless yeah. of what kind of player you are. And one of the biggest ways to practice <clears throat> actually ends up being dueling. 
You know, right outside Velika, the in the Velika outskirts, there's like pretty much the dueling hub of any server. Uh, some servers are obviously more populated than others, so you'll see different varying people there. But if you go outside Velika on prime time and whatnot, you're going to find people out there to duel. Dueling is going to basically make you force you <coughs> to learn what your class is capable of doing, how to go about skirmishing other players, whether that be the most beginning players to the most advanced players. You really learn almost everything from dueling, in my opinion. You know, whenever I first hit 60 as a Zerker, um, I I literally spent hours outside just dueling, theory crafting, uh, working on my build, seeing what other people were doing, learning how to play solely through the, those 1v1s. Because, in my opinion, Terra comes down to... Terra's a real action combat game. It comes to outskilling your opponent, outplaying your opponent. And if you understand what enemies have to do, then that's going to be... That's going to be core. And that's all learned from dueling, in my opinion. Have you... What have you done as far as, like, theory crafting with, like, builds and whatnot? Well, I mean, like, the best the best way to know your class is to fight another person who also plays your class. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, i also done a lot of um, death matching. So, like, if you look at the map that we're at right now, this is Ebon Tower. And this is, um, these rings where, uh, used to be, um, where a lot of, like, player-hosted tournaments are as such. And what's great about this map is that it provides the collision, which we've talked about in our previous cast, uh, along with, um, being a safe zone, which means no other people can interfere. So this is a great place for you to just kind of uh, get that sort of group combat in and um, really get that practice in that you really want in terms of... So you want to do like 3v3 or 5v5, like this is a great place where uh, it's been done in the past. Especially me, like I did a lot of practice here. Personally. Yeah. yeah. Um, after, after pretty much learning theory crafting, checking out other people's builds and whatnot, really found founding your own build your own personal play style even um one thing that you always have to do to be good at anything this is both pve pvp first person shooters whatever it may be you need to make sure to surround yourself by other players who enjoy doing what you're doing um so as PV as far as pvpers go find a pvp guild be on a pvp server surrounding yourself with those kinds of people will make will force you to play better force you to step up your game and really just improve you as a player do you do you have any experience with just being like in guilds and them making you play better well i mean <laughs> i've made a pvp guild like in mm -hmm. the first place and uh, like what's important is to just kind of like have that sort of that focus that focus will just keep you persistent you know like like I'll just keep saying it over and over, practice and persistence, and you just kind of just keep going at it. Um, when you play with good players, especially the ones that have really been comfortable with PvP, it's only a matter of time before you yourself get better. Like that learning curve, like really goes up when you play with people that you know are going to be really good at PvP in comparison to playing with everyone being like brand new to it. Like the, like the game's been out long enough for like me, like much of the end game community to just really involve with some with PvP already. So. Like, I don't know, like, you're just bound to get good at PvP through, like you said, like, just being a part mm -hmm. of that whole PvP environment, so. Definitely. So surround yourself by the people that you, you want to get better with, essentially. Yeah. So, now that we've kind of gone over the basics, uh, the mentality, you know, what you want to surround yourself with, what you want to do to start really learning how to PvP, let's go about preparing for PvP, past the basic learning stages. Um, so basically, any time that you PvP, and this is at 60, guys. This is not for Kuma Asylum. This is not for being a level 30, even though it is kind of applicable at level 30 as well for, like, Corsair Stronghold, because that is equalized. One thing that you need to have, that you need to look into, is Glyphs. Glyphs literally change the entirety of, of PvP. You know, there, there are certain glyphs, uh, just one to name off the top of my head for Berserkers, 25% charging speed on Thunderstrike. Literally changes how you play a class. So, everyone needs to make sure that you go get glyphs. Where can you find those? Uh, there, are, there are three ways for you to get glyphs. The first way is to do um, 
the Temple of Temerity dungeon, which is a level 58 dungeon. They've recently like downscaled it to make it a lot easier for new players to try to get that, their glyphs. The second dungeon is the Sirjuku Gallery dungeon. That is a dungeon where you have to, that's located in Alamanthea, where you have to kind of go through a, a simple yellow quest with like a kind of like a side story kind of quest mm -hmm. and you kind of go through it and it'll, it'll allow you to be able to partake in that dungeon where you get the more level 60 advanced glyphs like really like class specific sort of glyphs and yeah. finally the other way to do it is to earn 1400 bellicarium credits either through doing corsairs or doing freywind canyon and you can earn um the coveted class boxes specific for your class so you can be able to open those and you know RNG yourself and hope that you get like the correct glyph that you always wanted for your class. Those yeah. are the three best ways for you to get your glyphs. And that's that's pretty much a prerequisite to to get into PvP. Just is having your appropriate glyphs in essence, because everyone should go check out where we were showcasing these. So in Alimentia, um, at the Collegium Arcane. In Kyator, I believe it's like the Heart of Iron or something along those lines. And then in Velika, you want to be going and looking at what glyphs are available for you and figuring out which ones you will change that playstyle. Because it's pretty obvious. We didn't want to go into huge detail solely due to the fact that it is such a huge topic talking about every single glyph that is available. So, once again, glyphs are huge. You need to get them before you even consider doing max level PvP. Uh, at least, at least trying to really improve yourself because they will change your overall playstyle. Exactly. Next up, we're going to talk about Corsair Stronghold. Once again, this is an equalized battleground. It is available at level thirty, so you can get you can get your footholding in in Corsairs. You'll get to learn some of your basic skills. You know how to how to combo with your basic stuff properly in Corsairs because it is equalized and it gives you a little bit more. Um, of a chance in compared to some of, some of the max level players and whatnot, or the f fully veteran players who might outgear you at that point. So, what what do you think is important when it comes to Corsair Stronghold? Well, for one, you have to understand that like um, it's not exactly the most balanced battleground. It's the most active one, which means that like if you want to really get that PvP action as quickly as possible, especially when you're leveling from level thirty onward, just queue up and you'll, you're bound to get a pop. It takes like, what, two to three minutes? In yeah, order it's, for you it's get the in there? fastest queuing battleground. He is the it's the fastest queuing battleground on the NA servers today. Um, one of the things you have to understand is that um, you should listen to the leader. The leader the leader usually has a really good idea of how like the the play style is supposed to be working like the, uh, like for the whole team to work together. Kind of like the whole breaking the gates, getting into the cannons getting certain pile uh like the 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 middle pyres like just like the the whole objective base around the raid chat so if, paying attention to raid chat is pretty important uh when you're doing courses especially since if you're brand new to pvp i mean of course everyone wants to go in there and kill people and such mm -hmm. but the whole point of going into a battleground is to try to win it too so don't let's not forget about the objectives as well yeah yeah and and just kind of touch up on what corsair stronghold is guys it's a 15 v 15 battleground which with equalized PvP gear and the objectives are are pretty much gates. There are gates which you can siege down, turrets which can fire down and prevent people from attacking the gates. And then the end result, the end goal is to destroy or defend an anchor stone. Um, for anyone who has done any kind of castle sieging kind of stuff, that's essentially what you're going to find with Corsair Stronghold. So we should have clarified that a little bit earlier. But... For the most part, like Flo said, you need to listen to the leader. He knows what he's talking about, mo most likely, most likely. And if you're a new player in PvP, it's best to listen to the guys who have a little bit more experience than you. Um, that's just another point that I would like to make. Keep a, try to keep a level head, and and don't don't rage. <laughs> to be honest, um, just in PvP in general, because it makes you play worse. It makes I'm a berserker. I have plenty of rage. Trust me. Um, but try not to rage and try to just listen to the people who you think are might have a little bit more experience than you. All right. Next up, uh, just kind of stepping up from Corsair Stronghold, being that equalized area and whatnot, we're going to talk about Freywin Canyon. Once again, this is a 15v15 battleground that is a little bit more, instead of 
linear. I let, we'll call it linear, like Corsair Stronghold. It's like this is the end goal. Kill this one thing. Freywind is a Dominion. If anyone's played League of Legends or anything like that, kind of play style. There are three nodes available. Let me actually pull up the picture here of what Freywind is. There are three nodes here. Each one of those being a pyre, which, uh, let's see. Whenever you capture a pyre, the end goal is to get to 5,000 points. Whenever you capture a pyre, you get 200 points. And then if you maintain pyres, then you actually gain points per second on the other team. So in a points game, like Freywind is, it is essential to control the pyres. But what else is there to worry about? The, the, the main objectives. Like there's the... Um... At, uh, if you look over on the image here, there's certain spam timers that are really important. Um, they're, re they're, they're major objectives, in a sense. Um, at 3.30, there's a, a bam called the Terralith. The Terralith is a rock bam, and basically the, f the team that downs that bam first will get a global 3-minute power, attack speed, endurance buff on their entire team, which makes the damage scaling like completely big. At 5.30, there is a... Um, an a Naga Bam at the northern at the northern area, and that's a what 600 point like objective. So it, like, it gives you that little point lead or a little that little comeback that you're gonna need in order for you to try to beat the the battleground. And also, there's also four little um, like minion uh, monsters that sit around the map. Those guys give the um, red and blue buffs, and so it's kind of like a little bit extra damage boosters, and they provide like around. I believe 10 to 10 50 points. Point, 10 points? Yeah, 10 points. So just like a few more points along with, um, uh, you know, just getting that score up. But the primary objective will always be the pyres. The pyre, pyre control is really important to the Freywind Canyon like battleground. So just keep keep that in mind. Like, uh, bam objectives, pyres. Bam objectives, pyres, bam objectives. <laughs> yeah. Those are the two most important things to, to understand. You essentially and wrote Not road fighting. Game. Yeah. Not road fighting. Oh, come on. <laughs> what about swimming? There's water. Yeah, I guess there's that too. <laughs> but um, with with the BAMs in mind, you essentially want to try to maintain the goal, the end goal for Freywind is maintain two pyres. Maintain two pyres so you're constantly getting points on the opposing team. And then rotate between those BAMs. They're on a five minute respawn timer. And so on that on their death, on their death. So the first spawn of the Terralith, like he said, is going to be 3.30. The first spawn of the Naga is going to be at 5.30. And then every five minutes after after the killing blow, because only the killing blow counts on those guys, so you can steal that steal the uh, BAM objectives from the opposing team. Um, but basically, you want to rotate, you want to keep your timers down, and you want to just be able to PvP. And you know, in between all of that, while we'll maintaining the pyres. So, what you really want to learn and get from Freywind is this is where you're going to be getting your gear, or well, past Corsair Stronghold. This is where gear is going to come into focus, where you're going to be noticing that huge gear difference between you and more geared players because this is not equalized. So, here's where you want to start looking a lot more to play, play a less linear objective. Learn to team fight around pyres. Learn to learn your more advanced combos and how you should work well with teams. Like in Corsair Stronghold, you don't have to really, you don't have to rely on on synergizing with your team as much, rather than just push this objective, push this objective, push this objective. When you're defending or attacking in Corsair or in Freywind Canyon, this is where you need to learn how to synergize with other other classes and that's what your focus needs to be when you're trying to learn from Freeman Canyon. okay now here's the part where we're actually going to move on to and this this was more of our idea of what we wanted to talk about in this podcast is preparation for 3v3 so so what is 3v3 in a nutshell would you say series three is basically the most it's the highlight of Terra PvP at the moment. It's like it's like the thing to go to. The most competitive uh, PvP on Terra to date. And it's basically a small scale PvP where each team has two DPS and one healer. And the whole objective is it's basically it's round based PvP. And whoever wins the most rounds wins. Mm -hmm. Pretty much in a nutshell, that's what it is. So this is the competitive. 
this is the competitive, like you said, the cream of the crop highlight of Terra PvP. This is where most players are very hesitant to even start playing. Because they're they're unaware of the, the basic mechanics, they're unaware of the gear, they're unaware of just how what they need to go into that. So prep preparing for 3v3. Preparing for 3v3. We're gonna break this up into solo queue and we're gonna break this up into team queue. So First, we'll start off with solo queue, because this is probably where most people are going to be coming into the game, into the environment of competitive PvP in Terra. Once again, re reinstating the glyphs, you need, at, at, if you even plan on touching 3v3, you need to have every glyph that is essential for your class. You need to. Do not be the do not be the guy, the mystic who goes in there without his proper glyphs and ends up dying in the first five seconds of a match. You don't you don't want to do that. You need your consumables. You need your Noctinium infusions because they can be used in Champion Skyrim. That's going to give you five percent PVP damage, five percent PVP damage reduction, and boosting um, several skills with the Noctinium infusion effect. Let's see. The at this point you should have an intermediate understanding of your class skills, your class or all classes skills and the cooldowns uh, matched with them. What would you say? What would you say an intermediate understanding is for? Um, think about how well you have to understand what your class does for one. So the best thing to do is. You know, what What do you think your role is going to be when you're getting in that 3v3 environment? Like, what do you think you're supposed to be doing? Who do you think you're supposed to be focusing? Getting that, that rough idea is a good start, along with when you're queuing into the into solo queue, and then you take a good look at your team comp. Like, who, what, what DPS are you running with? For example, I, I'm a Slayer, and I queue solo queue into 3v3, and I notice that I have a Warrior on my team. So having an understanding of how that synergy works between a Slayer and a Warrior it's something that I'm going to need to know when I go into solo queue. That way, like, the, the more knowledge that I'm going to have and the more and the, ha and the more skill that I have in executing my, with my own personal skill is what's going to drive, you know, us to win the match. So that, that's, that's basically what I see as an intermediate understanding of your, of your class, especially. So. Yeah. On top of that is just when solo queuing, it is a learning experience, guys. It is not, it is not a... Because there is rating, there is rating attached to solo queue and team queue three v three course or champion skyring. Sorry, so solo queue is not about getting high rating. It's about learning your class. It's about perfecting your personal playstyle. And what has to come with that before anything else is the willingness to work with people. You're going to queue up, and you're going to get bad players. You're going to get good players. You're going to get the best players in the game. But more often than not, you're going to be playing in with with medi or mediocre or average level players who might not work perfectly with you. They might be completely against you, you know, just completely counteracting everything that you're trying to do. But you need to learn to work and have a willingness to work with players. Talk and chat, you know, don't don't rage, you know, things along those lines. And that's, that's what we really want to emphasize in preparing for 3v3, preparing for the solo queue environment. We're really promoting that, like, good adequacy and trying not to, like, lean yourself to having to kick. Like, there's going to be those matches where, you know, someone's going to land a giga chain and it's going to get knocked down. You know, oh, I landed that perfect sleep on someone, someone's going to hit it, like, by accident. Like, it's going to happen, you know. Don't it, you can't expect perfection. Like, when I... I do, I've done around two maybe three thousand solo queue matches with like like so many characters that i played and i played on characters where no one knows me either and like i understand that like some people like are aware of my existence but i i like playing on characters where no one knows who i am just so i can see exactly how people play and you know like the whole impression i've had people shit talk me too they're like god you're so garbage like it's fine <laughs> like you know like like the whole purpose of, of to me the whole purpose of being in a solo queue is you know Seeing how well I match up against the opposing team. Even if my team is, like, troll. And it's going to happen. You're going to have those trolling matches. But just keep at it. Like, you're going to get better. Like, 
eventually you're gonna you're gonna be like me and just have, somehow go up 300 rating through solo queue. Like it's gonna happen. You're just gonna keep playing. Like the purpose is to keep trying, keep playing, and you'll you'll get better. I promise. Definitely. So that's for solo queue. That's for the the intro that most people are gonna be approaching 3v3 with. Moving into team queue though. Team Q is a whole nother beast, guys. Team Q is whenever you want to get your friends, you want to get everybody, your guildies, your whoever you enjoy playing with, this is where you want to step up your game. Um, at this point, you have to have perfect glyphs because the teams that you're going to be fighting are going to have their perfect glyphs. They're going to have every single glyph that they that is necessary or that is, isn't even nece- like absolutely necessary they're going to have it just to boost them up with the advanced glyphs. You need to have every single glyph that is going for your class. It's it's just standard. I'm sorry, but that's the only way that you should you should go into 3v3 um, for the most part. Consumables, once again, you have to have Noctinium to be on an even playing field. It's, it's a standard. Uh, anytime you do 3v3 in general, you should have your Noctinium infusion. You need Panaceas too. Oh, yeah, on, the off, on the off chance that you die, uh, a lot of competitive priests now, they don't run 120 res on their priest spell. So when you, when you get up and you happen to get res, make sure to pop that thing as soon as possible. The good thing about combat panaceas is that they're on a relatively short CD. So when you, when you die and then you, ta- and then you take the first one, you're bound to drink another one too while you're in mid-combat. So you can keep using them over and over again until you go back to 120s. It's pretty simple. Mm-hmm. What else do we need? So, outside of that, outside of the Noctiniums and the Panaceas, which you should have, like, like Flo said, or must have, is a appropriate knowledge of what setups are usually good and how they work together. So this, this you can kind of think of what, what setups you find to be good. Flo was talking a little bit earlier about Warrior Slayer. That's a good setup because both both classes have good gap closers. Both classes can follow up each other. They just work well together. Same thing with lancers and sorcerers or archers. You, you have a huge hard casting AOE nuke. A, a lancer setting up for you. That's perfect. A berserker knocks down a lot. Get an archer in there. Get uh, another class that can knock down and complement you on top of that. You need to have an appropriate knowledge of what setups are good at the, at the time or just would synergize well together in general. You need to know how they work together, what you should be following up with on your end as well as your teammates because that's that's one way that you're going to improve, especially in 3v3, is just knowing how things should go. You can find those on guides. You can find those on streams. And then after that... Once you get, once you have all that knowledge lined up, then it then it comes down to the practicing and it comes down to the execution. But everyone also one of the hugest things about Team Three v Three is gear. Like gear is a huge factor in Terra. Terra is, I'll be honest, it is a very gear relying game. Doesn't mean that you cannot compete with uh, other players if you are slightly under under their gear, but it's going to make it a hell of a lot harder of a time. What what is the standard gear that you need for three v three? In my honest opinion, with how long pe- the the current gear patch has has led up to date, I feel like Vision Maker weapon is incredibly important. Like uh, the whole Vision Maker proc is already really strong as is, and as a DPS and even as a healer, the Vision Maker weapon is really really good. <laughs> There's no reason not to get it. Strike Force kind of competes, but the proc really makes a difference. And on healers, the cooldown reduction really makes a difference. So that's definitely important. For armor, I can be honest here. I think the VM2 PvP armor is only slightly better than the current Strike Force armor. So I feel like you can get away with Strike Force armor. If anyone's watched my stream when I've done 3v3, I've been in the same gear for the past six months. Just a Vision Maker weapon, all Strike Force armor. It works perfectly fine. Um, mm-hmm. You only want to get a Vision Maker 2 chest if you want that skill modifier. Like, if you think that skill modifier is really going to make the difference in those games, then yeah, go for it. As a healer, you might want all Vision Maker armor because, you know, you're really, you, your whole role is to not die at all. Yeah. So if you want as much defense as possible, then yeah, you need to get the best armor possible for your character. 
But, but starting... Let's just, Starting off, Stark Force is fine, in my yeah. opinion. Starting yeah. off uh, for 3v3s, you don't need the best gear. You don't need that PvP VM. In, for the weapon, in my opinion, you do not. That's Me, me and Flo disagree wholeheartedly on, on this one. But for 3v3, starting off, you need your Strike Force gear, which you're going to craft in Velika. Uh, you can go to the Velikarium vendor, where same place that you would find those coveted glyph boxes that we were talking about earlier. You can go there, figure out how to craft your Strike Force gear. You need need gloves and boots. Um, you can cut. You can kind of mix your way in with PVE gear uh, for the weapon and the chest piece. But for PVP, you have to have the boots and gloves, hands down. Outside of that, starting Team Q three v three, which which you know was the the basis of this, you. You should have, you need to have, actually, your Strike Force chest. And, in my opinion, you can go in in the lower ratings with Strike Force plus 12 weapon. M- keep in mind as well, everybody, this is all plus 12. This is not plus 9, this is plus 12. You need to be plus 12 to be in a competitive environment in Terra. You don't need perfect 3%, which is a whole other level of just talking about Masterwork and whatnot. But you need plus 12 strike force armor as a minimum to go into 3v3 team q 3v3 because otherwise solo q just make sure you have your glyphs because it's equalized so now that we've gone over the preparation and the minimums to go about actually doing 3v3 competitive 3v3 uh which in my opinion is the core of Terra pvp as it sits right now we can move on to once you finally get your gear, once you finally get your glyphs, once you finally get set up and ready to go in there. We want people to solo queue and actually have a lick of decency, uh, some basic etiquette. Let's talk about the basic etiquette of 3v3, solo queue specifically right now. What would that be, um, Don't jump. <laughs> That's like the important thing. Like, I, think, I think jumping is really trolly. And it's kind of like, like you're kind of going out of your way to be extremely annoying to your friends. Like I feel like you don't learn anything about your class when you jump, as a healer at least, because healers are the primary target of this sort of topic. So if you really want to learn about survivability and stuff, like it's a lot better to utilize exactly what your class has to offer than to jump. And the second thing is kicking as soon as you think things go bad. I noticed that like from my experience of doing solo queue, that every time that a round goes bad, they have to kick in the next round. Like, there's no question. Like, I, I don't, I don't see like the whole point of that. Like, like the whole, the whole first round is to gauge how well you're gonna play in the second round. Is just kind of like, you know, I'll find someone better. Mm-hmm. Like, that's. I think that's kind of really wrong in a sense. And I think that you know, you never know. Like, you're really dropping that opportunity to have that comeback. Like, it could happen. You know, like I could lag in the first round. Like, cut me some slack. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and uh, I think that for three, is that DCs do happen either on one side or the other side. So I think that going out of your way to kind of wait for them to get a third, you know, it takes like, what, a minute tops to get for them to get a yeah. third. I think that waiting one to two minutes for them to get a third is perfectly fine because at the end of the day, it's like if they don't get that, that pop in, then there's no reason to go in there and spawn camp them and kill them. Yeah. Like, if you really want to, like, get that cold competitiveness in, like, that's just kind of, like, trolling. <laughs> it's yeah. more trolling to me, so... No, those are my three guidelines to, um, yeah, to threes at least. So the basic etiquette of it. Yeah, you're not doing three v three. Like, I, some people are look strictly at the rating, you know, and that's not the way to look at it, in my opinion. Especially if you're trying to start doing three v three, just hands down. Like, your goal anytime you start doing three v three is just to become a better player, especially solo queue, you know. If, if a DC happens and you just camp them, like you were saying, what's what's that getting you? You're not you're not improvising. You're not playing against other people. You're going in on a two v three and just getting a free win. There's no point to that. The, literally, you get more c- credits if we're going to talk about credits from doing battlegrounds in comparison to three v three. Three v three is there to increase your skill and just have a good time. So kicking people, like, that doesn't make you better. I know for a fact, my girlfriend, whenever she solo queues as a mystic, as a healer, which I know it's been hard for you guys, I know, you know, 
both both sides have it where you get bad players, bad players, learning players, um, in in that environment. But she's like, if I get a bad player, hell, I don't kick him. I I'm I have to play better. You play better to compensate for that player because they're learning. We all started there, you know. We all started somewhere. So that's just etiquette, guys. Make sure you follow it, please do. If if you learn one damn thing from this podcast is just etiquette. Make sure you keep do unto whatever the hell that saying is. <laughs> it's a right to talk shit, but just don't kick. That's my <laughs> that's my <laughs> that's my take behind this. Or jump. Yeah. If you jump you're a scumbag. We hate you if you jump. Yeah. <laughs> so now that we've gone over the etiquette, that means that you're you're prepared to go in. You you know the morality of of what three v three brings you. Now let's actually <clears throat> talk, and this is going to be our final topic, guys. The basic mechanics of three v three. These mechanics that we're going to be over, that we're going to be showing here, are there. You need to understand them. You need to utilize them to be a good three v three player, and. They're, they are things applicable to every class. Not these things, not... We're not going to be like, oh, if, if a mystic teleports and you can backstab their jaunt. You know, like, we're not going cl uh, class by class. We're going to be saying these are the things that every single class should understand to be good at 3v3. So, the reason why, uh, much like Flo said earlier, this area, the Ebon Tower area has a really key feature and that's why we actually came over here to let's see do, 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 do. this is one of the reasons why we came over to the ebon tower pillars and line of sight are huge what line of sight is guys is when something is cast on you or something such as a sleep such as hell dps abilities you can run behind a pillar and be line of sight while that effect is mid-air and it will not affect you so this is also something like um this is also for heals so if you line of sight a healer that's gonna fuck you up too all right so here we go i'm gonna be dueling right here on stream okay oh you want to just do it normal let me let me actually take a little bit of damage here to where because you know zerkas kill themselves let me uh, let me take over for a second. Explain this, all right? In the three v three match, there are four pillars. Okay, and I don't know. I, I'm sure that people who watch this saw a wrong image. Those who have watched this, they understand that there's four pillars in a match. Pillar game is something that I feel that every healer needs to kind of understand. But at the same time, is that terrain gets in the way when you land your projectiles. So if you see here, Kyrian, I'm gonna select Kyrian here on stream, and Kyrian has around 76% HP. When I'm lighting my heal. If he gets directly behind the pillar, it's not going to work. Whereas if I was to line myself up with him, the spell will hit. So to understand this, is that this thing, this thing, this sort of concept applies both with positive healing along with taking damage and taking debuffs. So right here, I'm going to dual Kyrian. You go dual me real quick. Okay. <clears throat> And if I were to try to land my fear spell around over here, it's not going to affect them. If I try to land my sleep and land it over here, it's not going to affect them. Whereas if I were to come over to him and land my stun ball, I tenacity he tenacity did. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to troll me. <laughs> but yeah, that's just pretty much the gist of it in terms of the pillar game. Uh, what's important about pillar game is... Um, for healers, it's to just try try your best to try to kite the DPS around and wrap yourself around the pillar. Don't forget also that if you feel like you're getting pressure too much, you feel free to use your escape skills and move away from the pillar. But that's kind of like a uh, a little a little thing about taking advantage of terrain. And plus, it makes you feel like a like a trickster. You know what I'm saying? Like Kyrian's gonna try to pressure me here, and I'm just gonna wrap myself around the pillar constantly. Exactly, what yep. hit me? I just throw out the gist of it. What other mechanics do we have to explain? This All right, Kyrian. so. Outside of the pillar game, which is honestly a very core aspect that both DPS and healers need to understand full, like through and through, um, because that's going, I, I don't know how many times that's gotten me killed, that's gotten other players killed because they're line of sighting heals or, you know, <clears throat> dodging sleeves and everything like that. So, 
on the note of of just line of sight crowd control what crowd control is guys is it's the it's the effect of controlling your enemy with slows sleeps which they're going to be sit, sitting there for eight seconds just slept um fears Myers, everything that you're seeing here on Flow stream right now, I can't do a thing. My character can't move un unless I'm not affected by these kinds of effects. Crowd control is necessary to fully understand because that's what's going to win you the game. CC, crowd control, putting people into these effects, controlling players on the opposing team for 8 seconds, for 10 seconds, for 15 seconds that literally will change the entire pace of an of a battle if a healer can't heal for 10 seconds what's your team going to do if they're getting pressured or even getting set up um by like an archer and a lancer for their giga combo you can't do anything you're sitting there like a you're a sitting duck you know for a free setup and that's what crowd control really brings to the table and people need to understand what skills are crowd control? Um, let's see. Do you think you can actually mimic your... What's it called? What's up? Do you think you can actually mimic the sleep effects and whatnot? Dodging them? Oh, yeah. Let's see what I can do. I'm okay. going to try to do a client to say So here. what you can do, guys, is when a sleep happens... Because this, this is the thing that's going to be happening most to you. Is sleeps from healers. What you can actually do is... I frame them, or in vulnerability frame, every single class has one of these. And what that does is, right there, Lucifer, um, which Flo is actually playing both of these, so he's being a absolute boss. So you saw the difference here. Lucifer cast sleep on the Mystic right here, which the Mystic jaunted away and avoided the sleep. That's eight seconds, which they now have to CC the opposing team, to heal their team. And do everything that they want to do. Otherwise, um, if you get slept, you're going to have that full effect of them snowballing against you. So, this is this is the main thing that you want to look out for. With a priest, it's a yellow ball. It's a yellow ball which has a delayed effect. For a mystic, it's a blue ball which has an instantaneous effect. One thing that you need to do, guys, is practice, practice, practice. Go duel your healer friends. Ask them to chain cast sleep on you until you perfectly can dodge these skills. So right there was an, impro <laughs> an improper uh, time. So you really have to get the timing down. If you don't have the timing down, guys, you're going to get hit by that sleep. And you're going to have it snowball against you. It really, it really is a deciding factor of the game. So, once you, uh, once you get down and understand the mechanics of sleeps and crowd controls, you need to make sure that you understand the synergizing skills. This is a setup. You're not going to get a kill by just randomly harassing people in 3v3. You're going to get a kill by setting up with your teammates. So, these synergizing skills are things like not um, just what... Giga Chain into Archer, Reign of Arrows. That's going to be a, a killing setup. Bat, double Backstabs from Slayers. That's going to be a c full control setup and giving them a perfect damage setup on whatever target that they're going for. But on top of that is each each kind of character has their unique, their unique things. Like, for example, Warriors have Backstab Stun. I, I know this is a little bit more advanced for people, but these are still the basics of 3v3. Warriors are going to stun their target. If a Berserker comes up and hits that, it's going to knock down the target and actually get them out of that stun. So you need to understand, this This comes down to the advanced knowledge or above intermediate knowledge of knowing what class does what. Because if you if you break the synergy between classes, you're not going to get a kill. And that's what's going to really fall, throw you behind. So, pretty much... Can you think of any other synergy between uh, between classes? <clears throat> synergy? In terms of, like, skills that work together a lot? Yeah. Well, for example, we got Slayers and Berserkers. Slayers and Berserkers both have two knockdown skills each. So, 
having the Slayer going in for a knockdown and blowing the opposing team's retaliate will allow the Zerker's job to be a lot easier. So they'll come in and get their knockdown and be able to get execute the entire knockdown chain combo onto a target while knowing that you know the defensive uh, mechanisms of the target is gone. So they just come in, they just knock down chain, they kill him. It's pretty much yeah. as simple as that. That's there's a simple synergy right there. Perfect example. So understanding what classes are capable of and knowing how to synergize with them is is crucial when it comes to the basic mechanics of three v three. All right. Now, I want to talk about purges. So, what purges are, guys? Uh, this is a healer-specific thing. Uh, much like the sleeps and whatnot, purges remove all buffs from the enemy players. Mystics have a skill called Regress, which is a giant circle effect. Do you have that available that we can show them? Yes. Right here. Uh, let me make sure that I actually have this. I might have stuff up. So, all right. Can you cast Regress now? Let me just duel you real quick. I have to duel okay. you to get the grass up. It's an it's an opposing yeah. skill. So if you look right here, uh, Kyrian. I have my has, full buffs up here, guys. He's got a whole bunch of buffs right now. And it's by hitting my regress skill, I remove all of his buffs. Mm -hmm. So That's very crucial to ensure that like, you get your... Um, like, by removing all the, uh, the enemy team's buffs, you're increasing your chances of winning, basically. <laughs> exponentially. <laughs> yeah. So, that's what the Mystics one is. Let me forfeit this for you. And now, here's a Priest one, which is called Plague of Exhaustion. Not only does it remove buffs... Let me... I'll cast my, my buffs right here. There we go. You'll be good to go now. So, not only does it remove buffs, as you saw there, guys, it also does a debuff, which for, for melee DPS is terrible, because it double or it gives 50% increased cooldown on every close range skill. This also includes buffs that you apply to yourself as a Zerker or Slayer, things like that. So if you get plagued and you get removed, let's say you pop your biggest cooldowns and, and you're about to go for a kill, the moment you get hit by that regress or that plague of exhaustion, that's going to kill kill your chances of really setting up and optimally killing or killing a player basically so what you can do let's see on top of that is learning to for for mystics it's very very hard to dodge because it's an instantaneous circle which is going to remove everything for priests on the other hand you can actually dodge the skill it's much like uh the priest's sleep is a yellow ball in air the dispel however the purge the plague of exhaustion is blue so if you dodge that it's going to make you're going to maintain your buffs and especially if you're playing with a priest because the difference between priest and mystic is priests are heavily reliant on keeping their buffs on you so if you know they're going for a kill and whatnot if you know that th that the opposing team has full buffs you're they're going to be taking a huge amount um, of less damage in comparison to if they had no buffs. You know, you're going for a setup. So, if you're ever playing up... Th this is just for healers out there. Um, I know I, I we said that it wasn't going to be specific and whatnot, but for healers, this is essential to know. If you're going up against a priest, or you are a priest... You need to make sure that the enemy team is dispelled with Plague of Exhaustion or Regress. Otherwise, they're going to be at a huge advantage to you. Mystics, you don't have to worry about that as much because all your stuff is auras. Okay. Do you have any, any situations where you've seen the buffs like really change the game? When you're having every priest buff possible, like having that power buff on you and then having the energy stars buff on a priest on, on on me as a slayer and then having my in, in cold blood and having kaya's shield having all those buffs together along with you know maybe them having like some sort of really bad situation and me being able to do my job mm -hmm. the way i want to i'm more likely going to win because i have so much advantage over the other team with all of those up at the same time so Buffs are extremely important. Like this, is, there's no telling. I tell priests all the time that when you get dispelled, you want to have endurance buff back because 
there's a chance that you'll be soloed if you don't have that defense available to you. So just having, like, buffs are a really key feature, uh, like, or I guess a really key thing to know about threes constantly. And having those buffs, coming back in for rebuffs, coming back and then, like, dodging uh, the, the incoming plagues, dodging the regresses, dodging all the dispels is just an important role, like, an important thing that you need to know, along with, obviously, going in and trying to kill whoever you're trying to kill in the 3v3 match, so. Yeah. So, that pre- <laughs> I didn't notice how long this podcast is, but we're, <laughs> we're approaching 50 minutes right now. Yeah. <laughs> because this is how much, PvP is just the, the subject that me and Flo feel the most passionate about for the most part, so we have so much information that it's hard to even condense into all of this. So, just the final thoughts on this, guys, is practice is the most important thing. Literally. Practice dueling. Practice dodging sleeps. Practice doing all of these things um, while getting your gear, you know, from Velika. Get your strike for- full strike force gear. Get all of your appropriate glyphs from Alamanthia, from Kyator, from Velika, in, whether it be the PvE route or the PvP route. Make sure that you are fully prepared for for these PvP situations because you don't want to be the guy who ends up losing you the game from from just not being prepared. What what are your final thoughts on all of this? If you have uh, thought of that, that uh, you pretty much have summed it up. Just two threes, like it's not as scary as everyone makes it out to me. Like I understand it's a it's a very intimidating place and ratings and importance and like no like just. Go in there, like when I like every three season. It's a repetitive thing for me, but I'm always around a fifty percent win rate, like off the bat, because I like doing solo. I like going in there, like meeting new people, doing doing PvP. People like, you know, they wanna they wanna show how good they are. You know, like that's 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 the perfect environment for you to go in there and really, like, do your best to try to shine and really see exactly what you yourself have to offer as an individual, mm-hmm. like, and all that skill. And all that jazz, <laughs> just uh, just have fun with it too. Especially like, just don't like you know like. Trust me, it's it's just a battleground, guys. Let's just have fun with it. Definitely, that's you know that it's it's a game, and you should try to be the best player that you can. At the same time, you know, have fun, have fun with it. That's like you said, just go with it. <laughs> so, that's gonna be it for the podcast part guys um last week we did our very first everything terra giveaway sponsored by terratoday.com which i'm gonna flash oh well, yeah i'm gonna flash a couple times on here so thank you very much Terra today easily your best source of guides easily your best source of terror related content that you'll find on the internet uh, if you want any k terra news that's where we literally get pretty much all our information so yeah make sure to check it out but so, each week we're going to be doing a 1100 EMP giveaway for both Flowstream as well as my YouTube. The way this works, guys, you should probably po- start posting the key, by the way, is we're going to be posting a key in chat or in the description down below, which you will then go to terratoday.com slash redeem. That's going to bring you to a page which you will type in the, in the code, uh, that we will have listed, that I'll have in an annotation, that I'll have in the description, that you'll see in Flow Stream right here, and that will enter. You can only enter it once. It will enter you into the giveaway that we will be drawing. I personally will be drawing it Friday of next week, so you have a full week, guys, to make sure to enter in mine for um, the Terra Today giveaway, or yeah, Terra Today slash Everything Terra giveaway. And today on Flow Stream, once we finish up the podcast, he'll be choosing the winner for that. So, I'd spam that key a couple times, by the way, just to make sure everybody gets it. Alright, so that's how the giveaway is going to be happening, guys. Once again, this is for 1100 EMP, so if you do win, you'll be able to get that on stream, or uh, message. I'll message you if you win on YouTube. And yeah, just to kind of close up, guys, my name's Killian. Make sure to check out my YouTube at youtube.com slash Killian. You might have another chance to win with that. Uh, or w- win the giveaway. You have to make sure to comment down below. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to really enter as much for you as well. 
Um, let's see. Teartoday.com slash Killian. Make sure to, or Teartoday.com. Check out my guides. Check out the podcast every single week. You can find them uploaded on there. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Killian. I post on there random shenanigans. Uh, let's see. And then Facebook.com slash Killian as well. Those are going to be updating anytime I start streaming or anytime I upload a YouTube video. And if you don't check out any of my content, uh, feel free to check out my stream at Twitch. Dot TV slash Flororo. I also do upload a lot of like my own like highlights and sort of like my own adventures of like gaming as well on youtube.com slash Flororo. And of course, follow at Flororo on Twitter and uh, slash Flororo on Facebook if you want to get to know me a bit better or just kind of see what sort of updates that uh, I'm going to be putting out. That's pretty much it. If you want to see uh, every single Terror Girl pretty much <laughs> follow at Floro cuz he will every single tw- every single tweet i see with hashtag Terra online it's like favorited retweet favorited retweet <laughs> we're a thirst list thanks for watching guys hopefully you enjoyed the podcast catch y'all next week make sure to submit your topics whether it be in the description or on friday i'll post a reddit thread but yeah thanks for watching guys hopefully you enjoyed it see you guys later peace out